Okay, so this is our coop. We do have a run where we can close this off. It is covered on the top. Um, so if we're doing something where we're going to be having the back gate open and we need to bring vehicles back here or whatever and we want to keep the girls locked up or if the weather's really bad, um, we can close this door and keep it locked up. Um, we can close this uh, if we chose to lock them up at night or if we had predators coming around uh, that were taking our birds and we were afraid they were going to get in, we can shut this. Uh, we can open this for cleaning. This is the egg box. This is where the nesting boxes are. So you lift this up to get inside. To Frankie, go ahead and show us. Right now there are some eggs in here. Not white. Not white. <laughs> Or if it's a really hot day and you want to have some severe ventilation if it's like a triple digit day. Yeah. Oh, there's an egg in there. Ventilation's important. Get all those gases out the top. The ammonia. We also built this off the ground a little ways so that the chickens can actually get underneath the coop. In the summertime, this is really important because it gets really hot and they need the shade. And when it's raining, we can put their food underneath there to keep it from being rained on. Okay, so this is the brooder. We added this on after the fact, after we built the coop. Um, this is divided into two sections with an access hatch on the back end. So this is my main door that I use when I want to go in, uh, especially while they're young, to feed, water, check the heat lamps, etc. So we've got this, these slide out, so I can take these out all the way if I need to once the birds are larger, but this keeps them from bum rushing you with the door and escaping, getting clotheslined in the door. We have 50 birds in here right now. The other half of the brooder I don't have opened up yet, but once these guys get a little bit larger, I can put bedding down there and open this up and raise the heat lamps accordingly. All right, guys, so it's been about a week um, since we got the birds, um, and they are growing like crazy, which is what they do. We also added uh, six broad-breasted white turkey poults um, to the mix here. We are breeding our own heritage birds uh, this year, just like we do every year, but they are considerably smaller than the broad-breasteds. So we like to have a few of the broad-breasteds um, for those big, giant birds that people like to do for families that are ginormous. We prefer the smaller birds because we have a smaller family. Um, the cool thing about the little turkeys, they look like baby ostriches to me. I just love the poles. They're so cute. You can tell them apart. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see in the sea of yellow babies here, but the uh, turkey poles have little nubs right above their beaks. That is what will turn into their snood. Um, both male and female, Jennies and Toms, both have snoods. However, on the Toms, uh, as they reach maturity, it becomes much more pronounced. And sometimes, depending on the breed, you can sort of tell early on which one is going to be a Tom and which is going to be a Jenny just based on looking at their snood button. But I think it's cute. There you go, snood button. We did add uh, a tarp. We've gotten some rain in the last couple of days here, so I had Mike put up a tarp for me today because uh, it was getting a little bit windy and some moisture was kind of getting in the top, so I just wanted to make sure they were staying nice and snug. I did not raise their heat lamps up this week like I normally would have due to the weather. Um, we did have another severe frost and we now are hitting a little bit of rain. Um, so normally we don't start our birds quite this early in the season. We started them about three weeks earlier than we normally do. And I know you said three weeks, big deal. But in this part of the world where we live, we tend to get a frost right about now. And we tend to have some heavy rains. So luckily the rains have been more light, but we did get a couple of frosts. 
So I am keeping the heat lamps low for now and I will keep an eye on the weather and how the chicks are hanging out in the brooder and that will kind of help me decide when and how high to raise them. Um, you can monitor the temperature uh, with a thermometer. Some people like to keep a real exact close eye on it. Um, I like to just kind of gauge it based on the bird's behavior. I think that's always a more accurate gauge than what the textbook says the temperature should be. Um, you know, some birds run hotter than others, some groups like to cuddle more than others, so I just always kind of gauge it based on their behavior. Um, so far, uh, we've had a very low uh, attrition rate. We've only lost uh, one bird, um, which is pretty good. So, so far so good. and. Uh, they're just growing like crazy. I would say they've easily already a little more than doubled in size from the day that we got them. And they kind of continue that <laughs> until about, what would you say, about the four week mark and then they're, they kind of slow down doubling from there. Um, and then they, they're still obviously putting on weight and gaining size, but not quite at the same rate that they do. Those first four weeks are pretty much like, <laughs> you watch them just kind of outgrow their feathers. They literally grow faster than their feathers can come in.